very excited to be here. Thank you for having us. Yep. Um, this is exciting for me because it's kind of a homecoming too. I went to college here. When I graduated, I had zero money. In fact, I remember it was less than $20 in the bank and needed to go see a doctor and Plant Parenthood is who stepped in there. So, so North cool. Austin Plant Parenthood, thanks. Oh, <laughs> Um, Cecile, I guess to start, you, one of the things that is really maddening to me, even in this moment, is how uh, even people who are very reasonable and should be very informed still uh, are not very clear on what it is that the mission of Karen has. So once and for all, it's South by Southwest. Can you <laughs> tell us what that is? Yeah, right. it probably won't be once and for all, though, I guess <laughs> I'd say. It's sort of a constant... But also, can I say it's like nice to be home myself because I'm an Austinite, and uh, so. In fact, someone just pulled up a photograph. This is really funny, of the very first South by Southwest conference, which was in music, uh, and my mom Ann Richards was the keynote speaker. So it was really it's kind of nice to be back. That's so cool. Anyway, go go mom. Um, so Planned Parenthood. Well, first of all. We're celebrating our 100th anniversary this year, so that's pretty incredible. And uh, one interesting thing is people say, oh my gosh, it seems like it's so controversial. Well, our founder, of course, was thrown in jail for providing information about birth control. So we were sort of, were found, I mean, we were founded and have always been a movement that tried to push the envelope in terms of reproductive health care rights and access. Uh, but right now we are um, the only national reproductive health care provider in this country. We serve about two and a half million patients every year. And I'm very proud of that fact. We, half of our health centers are in medically underserved communities. And that means, that can, that can mean everywhere, but includes a lot of uh, rural and small towns. We provide um, health care to one in five women in this country at some point in their lifetime. So glad that you were an alumni, as am I. And we provide of course, family planning, and we're very proud of the fact that we, we provide all kinds of family planning. We provide every single kind of birth control method, and fortunately, they're getting better. We provide STI testing and treatment to a lot of folks. Uh, we provide uh, cancer screenings to very many, many of our patients. We're their only doctor. And we're proud to provide safe, legal abortion, and we always will. We always will. So I guess the big question for us here at South by is how does this 100-year-old healthcare provider and the platform that powers over 300 million blogs, how does that relationship make sense? It's, it seems like strange bedfellows, right? I hope not. Uh, okay. So we, we started hanging out for the first time, Cecile and I, uh, <laughs> and, our, and our teams, when uh, Planned Parenthood showed up on Tumblr a few years ago now as one of the first kind of causes and nonprofits really using Tumblr um, and ju these just phenomenal and interesting ways, and these ways that really engaged our community in ways that helped uh, Planned Parenthood progress its mission, um, help our community find the information that they needed and find more ways to get kind of attached to and uh, participate in this cause that was, you know, they knew was important to them. They didn't necessarily know the, the way in yet and what they could do to help. Um, so Planned Parenthood was on there early. They had a handful of blogs doing everything from uh, LGBT outreach, uh, sex education, answering questions, nurses and doctors on there answering questions, um, and uh, getting, you know, lighting up advocates and evangelists uh, for the, the fights and for the, the mission uh, that Planned Parenthood was out in front of. So they were doing this so phenomenally well that we wanted to hang out, not really to you know, give guys any advice. We didn't think that we had any of the answers. We really wanted to kind of hang out and take notes and see what we could learn and take away from that to make our platform better and maybe share with other other folks, other organizations that wanted to do the same. So that's, that's when we started talking. And it's been fabulous. I just have to say, Tumblr has been on the forefront of helping us figure out, uh, again, for an organization that's really committed to trying to take away barriers to information, uh, education, healthcare, being a place where it's welcoming and non-stigmatizing, non-judgmental, Tumblr, the Tumblr community is our community, and it's just been, I just want to really give it up for David and the, whole, the company for being uh, willing to get out there when no one else would um, on these issues, and I think we're changing people's lives as a result, so thank you, Dave. Um. I think that you make a really, really good point about how um, the fact that the community just had no stigma is the reason that we see such good storytelling, I think, specifically on Tumblr. I think uh, 
we've seen that around other issues. But for you, David, was uh, reproductive rights something that you've been thinking about for a long time, or you know, like, kind of where does your so? So I'm now the, the third generation of my family to be involved with Planned Parenthood in some capacity. So I, there were two generations of women before me who were uh, very involved in the organization. So yeah, it was always an organization I, I knew about, had you know a, a, um, an appreciation for that I valued. Um, growing up, though, I had um, the experience that I think you know a, a lot of people my age went. Which, I mean, certainly every teenager goes through, which is like the terror, self doubt. Questions go along with growing up, trying to figure out you know, what what the hell your body is doing, and how any of this stuff works. And I was one of the first generation that turned to the internet to answer a lot of those questions. And I remember even then, when I was growing up, when I was a kid, like you know, getting online through AOL, um, searching for this stuff. Planned Parenthood was one of the first kind of resources for the kind of canonical sex ed, uh, you know, answers to questions um, that actually made sense. Ac that I you know actually came to trust. And um, just having a lot of folks that work in healthcare in my life, and you know, a whole community of young people using our platform, you know, I was just constantly reminded that people are constantly going through that process, and uh, you know, an experience that's really pretty terrorizing. I mean, these moments where you think like totally screwed up, ruined yourself or your life forever, and because of the stigma, is it happening? Got no, but you much shame to ask your parents. You don't have a relationship with your doctor. Uh, it's you know, too weird and embarrassing to talk to your friends or anyone at about Oh, now you're going to turn to the web, uh, your phone, the internet. Um, and you know, it, it was just very clear to me that Planned Parenthood was going to be the trusted uh, source for you know, answers to those questions, for, for that help and that support. And just, you know, Again, spending so much time in this community that is so young, so many people who are going through all of these moments, just being constantly reminded of that and how important it was. Um, so, so, can you walk us through some of the ways that Planned Parenthood is using tech and innovation to really change the services that you're? Sure, and I want to pick up what, um, what David said because and I think maybe Chelsea is here. I'm not sure, but she's yay, Chelsea, uh, who we talked the other day. Uh, Chelsea worked at Planned Parenthood and. Uh, answers a lot of questions of young people. And the interesting thing is, so I've been at Planned Parenthood now 10 years, and the questions not only haven't changed in 10 years, they really haven't changed from, from when I was a teenager. It's, it's, you know, I think the kind of questions that, that we constantly get just shows an indication of how much more we can do for young people are, do, you know, do you think I'm pregnant? Could I be pregnant? Uh, how do you get pregnant? Uh, am I normal? Even like, is this normal with a photograph attached? I mean, this is like, it's really, uh, honestly, the, the same basic information that we're not doing a good enough job of providing young people uh, is where technology really helps. So now we do uh, we have a text chat program. Thousands of young people text with us every month. And again, even though some of the questions are the same questions, I, one of the things we've really learned, and, and Chelsea's been a great, um, you know, has really seen this, is that even if you have the same question and it's answered on a website, a lot of young people, they just have to reach out and talk to somebody in their so having that ability, and I think that's one of the things we're really interested in working with the tech community on is how do we how can we ever get this scale up so the folks who really really need to reach out to somebody uh, can find them. Uh, it's completely transformed our ability for people to tell their stories, and I think that has a lot to do with how we change stigma and shame in this country. If it used to be you could never get the you know stories were never covered in the news, but I remember the first time we were under the attack from then Congressman Mike Pence, now Vice President Pence. Um, in case you missed that transition. Um, but uh, uh, the first time he led the campaign to uh, defund Planned Parenthood at the federal government, uh, Congress, it was Deanna Zant, who is also just this awesome, um, uh, anyway, awesome friend, who started the Tumblr page, Planned mm -hmm. Parenthood Saved My Life. And that was when we just saw this organic explosion of folks beginning to tell their stories about how Planned Parenthood had been there for them. And that was the beginning of storytelling. 